Hey everybody, Corn Fed Lady here, and today I'm going to show you how much has changed on our homestead in the two years that we've been here. First, let's talk about the barrier. This is our berry area. It started off as just some pasture grass that seemed like a waste to have to mow. So we decided to plant some raspberries and blackberries. And as you can see, they took to the ground just fine. And pretty soon, we even added a third row so we could have more berries in our barrier. Now let's take a look at how the barrier is doing today. Not too bad. Along the fence line here, you can see the snap peas that I've been harvesting from all spring and early summer. I also got some currants off of our four currant bushes here, and they're still producing a little bit of fruit. Just behind there are our blueberries, and we have two different varieties of blueberry because you have to to get them to fruit. We've already been harvesting some blueberries off of these, and there are still some left to go. These ones will be ready in a few days. Just behind our blueberries are the new asparagus sprouts that I planted from seeds. We do have an old asparagus patch, but it's not doing so well, so I started this new one. On the back fence here, we have two different grapevines that we planted just this year. We do plan on training these grapevines up the posts and over the lines. There are two large hedges of blackberries, and each one is made up of four individual blackberry plants. We don't trellis our blackberries, we just let them grow into a hedge instead. The when, when I was growing up, nobody ever had trellises for their blackberries or raspberries that I saw, so we just let them grow in a hedge like they would normally do in the wild. The middle section here is full of strawberries. We started those as bare roots last year, there are 25 of them, and they've pretty much already finished producing this year, but there are still a few that are hanging on. The other end of the barrier has our two rows or hedges of raspberry bushes. Again, these hedges are made up of four individual plants each, and you can see they're producing quite a bit. I've been harvesting and preserving blackberries and raspberries by the pounds every morning. The southern middle section has our cranberry bushes, which we've just gotten and planted recently, so they're not very big yet. And of course, I definitely need to weed out around them. It's looking pretty overgrown. Well, that's our barrier today. Hopefully, it'll continue to produce more and more every year. On to the veggie garden. We decided to start a large vegetable garden this year, so we tarped off an area over the last fall to be able to kill out the grass and get it ready to till for our new vegetable garden. I found some old wooden beams, and my husband found some free cinder blocks online, and I used all of those materials to build a free raised bed uh, garden for our potatoes. Um, I did this this year because we were digging our potatoes too much last year and by putting them in this raised bed scenario it should be easier to harvest them when it comes time. And that time is fast approaching. This is what our garden looks like today. Let me take you on a short tour and explain how everything is doing and what we have in here. We have six pumpkin plants along the edge here and those are small sugar pumpkins. Right in front of that are three watermelon plants, and you can see they're already starting to produce fruit. I'm so excited to try one of these watermelons and see what it tastes like. Some of these plants that are further along we've purchased from a friend at the farmer's market, and these watermelons were one of them. Just next to the watermelons, we have a couple of cantaloupe plants. They're not fruiting yet, but they are definitely flowering. Along the back edge are some seedlings, and those are also all watermelons. Just in front of the watermelons here are a couple of squash plants, which haven't produced anything yet. And in the back here, we have four pepper plants, 
which are medium sized, almost ready to produce, but not quite. I have seen a few flowers on these and even a couple of little bud heads, um, but I've yet to see any peppers on these plants. It looks like it's only a matter of time though. Right behind that is a patch of carrots that I left for seeds. And you can see where I harvested all the way down and left the other end for also for seeds. Behind that we've got our sweet corn patch and just in front of that are the tomato seedlings that we've started this year. They're not fruiting yet but they are definitely flowering. Just in front of those are the pepper seedlings that we've started this year and they're not quite ready to flower yet but they're doing really well. You can see the whole row of seedling tomatoes and peppers. My husband and son actually planted those. Now above those we have some large tomatoes and large pepper plants that we did buy from our friend at the farmer's market. This one in the back here has been producing some chocolate cherry tomatoes and we've already harvested two or three of them and you can see there's plenty more growing. Since they're cherry tomatoes they like to grow in a bundle like that and they don't get very big. So that's as about as big as they'll get. And you can see this plant is just loaded with these, with these tomatoes. And if that wasn't enough, on top, there are even more blossoms. So this thing's going to keep on producing more and more. Now in the middle here, I have a tomato plant that's for saucing. I can't remember the variety, but it is starting to produce some fruit. And some of those fruits are getting pretty big but they're not turning colors yet. And again, it does have more blossoms on top, so it's gonna keep going. This third tomato plant on the end here does have blossoms, but I haven't found any fruit on it just quite yet. Now on the other hand, this pepper plant has some really impressive peppers, and these are sweet, um, oh, what are they, sweet Costa Rican peppers and they are supposed to turn red eventually so they're not quite ready but they are getting really large and we do have three of those plants that are producing peppers like that and they're all getting to be a pretty good size so hopefully we'll be able to get some peppers soon I will do harvest videos about all of these uh, vegetables as they ripen and we pull them from the garden so stay tuned for those future videos on the vegetable garden. Now let's take a look at this sweet corn. This is the peaches and cream variety. We have nine rows and there's about a hundred plants in there so that should give us about 200 ears of corn. And in front of that we've got um, a potato bed and this has Kennebec white and Yukon gold and we like those two varieties because one is good for frying and the other one is good for baking. Back in the corner there is our compost pile and you can see the rest of the carrots that I've left for seed and the kale running along. Um, I am still harvesting some kale every day for the rabbits to eat and this first potato bed that we did a video on um, is actually just about ready to harvest. You can see some of the plants are kind of flopping over, looking really pitiful and uh, like they're dying. The ones on the end there are turning yellow and kind of leaning over. That means that they're just about ready to harvest. We're going to wait a little bit longer until it's a little more dried out in this bed, but pretty soon we'll have a harvest video on that and the one in the back about a month later. Okay, now this year we did decide to raise some pigs for meat. Uh, we put them out there in the pasture next to that garden that I just showed you that we built. We also built a pig pen and uh, we used hardware uh, for fencing to go around it just like a normal fence for animals. But then we also ran an electric wire on the inside of the fence to keep them from digging under it or into it. Um, so you'll see us hanging the hard wire fence here, and again, we did add an electrical fence to it later. 
The pigs came from a nearby breeding farm and they are certified Berkshires. We got two of them. One is male, one is female. Uh, the male has been fixed so we're not going to have to worry about any baby piglets or anything like that. Um, the girl's name is Sausage and the boy's name is Bacon because we want to keep it in perspective of who they are and what they're here for. Now that being said, we do have fun with our pigs and they have fun with us. You can see this is some footage from today. I was hosing down Bacon because uh, it's pretty hot out and sunny and I was filling his wallow up and he decided he wanted to shower too. Of course, Saucy saw what was going on and she come out and wanted to get sprayed too. <laughs> so we do have fun with our pigs. All of our meat animals are treated just as kindly as our animals that are here full time. We don't discriminate. And that moves us into rabbitry. Now we do have some rabbits that we got in the winter. Um, and my husband had to build these cages while it was snowing and there was like two blizzards and uh, feet of snow and anyway, it was a whole fiasco. But we did get the cages built. We got their place put together. This is Mr. McFeely, the male breeder that we got from Rural King. And these other two are the female breeders. Uh, that's Midnight in the back and Beebs in the front. And they did come from a breeder farm um, and they were certified New Zealand. So as soon as we got them home, uh, we raised them up about another month or two in age and we successfully breeded both of the females. This is Beeb's litter. She had nine babies and Midnight also had a litter. She had seven babies. We did give the one smallest baby away, the runt, as a pet to the neighbor. Um, but then we're going to keep three of them as breeders, additional breeders. So this one here is Mr. McFeely and he is our male breeder. I'm getting him some fresh hay that we've been growing in the pasture out back and harvesting with the scythe. So this is um, our male breeder, Mr. McFeely, and he is just the sweetest little creature that you've ever seen in your life. He loves being pet. He tries to jump up and give me a hug and puts his feet on my shoulder and he's just the snuggliest little thing ever. Um, Anyway, moving on to our female breeders. This one is Beebs, or BB for Broken Blue. And she's going to get a little bit of fresh hay from the field, too. They seem to really enjoy this fresh grass hay that we've been cutting from the field for them, and it's sure saving us money on having to buy Timothy hay. Now, Beebs here, ever since we moved her babies out, she's been very needy for pets. So Bieber's has been getting quite a few pets lately, more than, more than she used to. And the third and final breeder rabbit that we have in here is Midnight. And she is Bieber's half-sister. And they're both the same age. They were born, I believe, one day apart. She's getting some fresh hay, too. Midnight's a very good mom, and all of her babies are the biggest ones that we have right now. Uh, so we do plan on keeping the females from Midnight's litter, just because we feel that that's the bigger uh, bloodline to follow. And you can see I'm using my hand here kind of as a reference guide. She, from nose to tail, is about three hand lengths. Um, just for reference, the babies are about two hand lengths. And Beeb's babies are only about one and a half hand lengths. This is our Gabby Kitty. She's a farm cat and she helps us with just about everything. And these are the grow out cages that my husband built um, for the baby rabbits to finish getting up to wait in because they're too big to stay with their moms the whole time. And you can see it's just a simple process where I move them over each um, a little bit each morning so that they can be on fresh grass. This lets their poop fall out through the bottom so they're not sitting in poop. It also gives them fresh grass to graze on, which again helps to save on feed. Uh, they do have rabbit pellets in their cages. And you can see one end of the cage is boarded up and that protects them from the wind and the rain and the sun and everything. And uh, the other end of their cage just has the tin roof over the top 
and other than that it's open uh, which is cage wiring. So they can kind of have an outdoor experience and an indoor house or home experience and they seem to really enjoy uh, this kind of layout here. And that litter was Midnight's Babies and this litter that we're looking at now is Beeb's Babies. And you can see that broken uh, white and gray color just like their mom and there's a brown one over there that looks just like their dad. The rest of them are mostly black and gray uh, because that's just what's in their genes. Now this litter is the one that they're a little bit smaller in here so what we're planning on doing from this litter is saving a male and I'm honestly kind of hoping it's that brown one because he's just so cute and sweet and he looks just like his dad. But you can see how they can tuck in and out from under that boarded wall there um, to kind of hide away in there from bad weather or if they're scared of something. Now the chickens are last in this video but they were actually first on our homestead. <coughs> And Mr. Frankie just recently joined us a few months ago. Um, we adopted him from a friend. He was being aggressive to their young children. And you can see me uh, trying to be his friend there. And you can see him trying to be the hen's friend here. He's actually integrated really well with our flock. And they have fully accepted him as their leader at this point. This is footage from today. And you can see our girls running over to greet me as usual and right behind them is Mr. Frankie. He follows them around, they follow him around, he makes sure that they're safe at all times and at all costs. And Mr. Frankie is greatly, greatly appreciated on our homestead. Now I don't really go in there with them very often because he can be aggressive towards me, but he takes good care of the girls. And that's what really matters. These two are Moo and Opal, a rooster and hen that came together. We adopted them from friends as well. And they just um, needed somewhere to go. They also need a flock, we felt like. So we incubated some eggs from all of our chickens. And here you can see some one-day-old baby chicks that have hatched out of those eggs since. And when they're about five to six weeks old, we'll be able to put them out with Moo and Opal so that they can have their own flock and um, their own friends. We were not able to integrate Moo and Opal with the other flock because the roosters um, were trying to fight each other. But here are the seven babies that we have for Moo and Opal and hopefully that'll work out for them. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel and share our videos on your social media. Have a good one.